Hello community, glad that you are back. Imagine you go to sleep and you tell here your local LLM, maybe your Mac Mini or your Mac Studio here, hey, update yourself overnight on a specific topic, like a specific branch of medicine or some medical treatment, some health condition, some medication, whatever. And then you see in the early morning hours, Create from your updated LLM a very small, a tiny LLM for my phone and upload it to my phone. So I have then a highly focused, absolute up to date LLM on my phone. This is what we're going to experience today. Now, we are looking here in the research pipeline of Google, so you will not see this until the first quarter of 2024. But I think it is interesting, especially because look at the performance increase. If you have your large LLMs that you maybe you have here on your next Apple software with your machine learning X, you see you go from 70% to maybe 77%. And this here is an auto evaluation of a very specific data set by Google that Google created that no search engine can solve. So if you see here 50, it is not 50%, but it is something that a normal Google search is not able to solve. Now, if you look at the blue one, this is the, the really tiny LLM, maybe from two, three billion trainable parameters, maybe up to seven. And if you do this, that the AI updates itself overnight with the latest data, or with a new specific knowledge that it is not has been pre-trained or fine-tuned on, you have an almost linear improvement every time you run this here on your local LLM. So, interested? Let's have a look. As I told you, we are looking here down the research pipeline. We want to improve our large language model in the context of really complex multi-step reasoning tasks particularly when integrating here with external knowledge, let's say overnight. And this integration of new knowledge is crucial. So the solution by Google is it introduces a new methodology and it combines here the React style LLM agent for reasoning and action on external data with a reinforcement self-training of an LLM for an iterative training and self-improvement. So if you want, you have here a depiction of the React style LLM agent. And here we have our reinforcement, not the reinforcement learning with human feedback that you know, your DPO, your PPO, your proximal policy optimization. But now we have a new methodology for reinforcement learning, self-training of LLM for self-improvement. Please note, this is now the complete opposite from my last video. In my last video, I showed you here Microsoft's MedProm. This is kind of a super rag with some extreme in-context learning where the semantic update and the semantic correlation is stored in a vector store. Today, we talk about a solution by Google that uses no vector store at all. The LLM is updated and fine-tuned immediately. So now the new knowledge is integrated into the new LLM. Okay, React style LLM agent capable of reasoning and acting upon external knowledge. The REST-like method is reinforcement, iterative training, it uses AI feedback, it uses some synthetic data generation by the AI for the AI evaluation, for a continuous self-improvement, we are fine-tuning the complete model for a best aligned performance. And then in the morning, in the early morning hours, this fine-tuned model creates here a tiny little LLMs that you can take with you locally on your iPhone. Now, we have to look at four different scientific papers. You know here from ICLR 2023, React. Beautiful. It is by Google with Princeton University. 
Uh, maybe you are not familiar here with Google Research and Google DeepMind. The reinforced self-training. It is based on the reinforcement learning from human feedback. And they are now here focusing on a specific type. This is the growing batch reinforcement learning. And based on this, they developed this methodology of reinforced self-training. We will look at this in a second. Just for my younger viewer and for Ben, if you want to learn about batch reinforcement learning, unfortunately, this is behind a paywall by Springer. Therefore, I found this publication for you if you want to inform yourself here about batch reinforced learning by McGill University, Canada. Now, we expect that we have two grown up methodologies. Beautiful, we have the code for this. And beautiful, we have the code for this. So if we combine it, what we expect is, yeah, it goes together. It's perfect harmony. Everything works well. A, we have our React style LLM agent. And B, we have here our iterative training, fine tuning, auto tuning, and the self improvement of our LLM. Now, unfortunately, if you look deeper into the code, you discover that even with here the beautiful publication by Google Research, Google DeepMind, and Google itself on December 15, 2023, when REST meets React, this self improvement can be a little bit more complicated than you would expect because it looks more like this. But never mind, we're going to go through this model step by step. So here we go. Now, if we have synthetic data set generation, you know this. We have an LLM, we have a simple task, like a basic question and answering or summarization. And then we decide, hey, is the final output of this LLM good or bad? Can I use it? So all the green are good, all the red, you are not happy with the response by the LLM. And then you take all your green and this green in total create you the new synthetic data set that you can fine-tune your LLM, you further fine-tune it on a specific task. Now, if we have agents, agents will do this for us. So the agent here decides, hey, it's missing some actual data. I have no data from yesterday because my data are one week old. So I have to go to update to the internet, to some database. I have some interdisciplinary data sources, goes there, creates a Q and an A answer, creates another Q and an A, and then the AI evaluates, okay, this is a bad answer and this is a good answer. And how it does the evaluation, I will show you in a minute. And the same way down. Great. Now, normally, when we do the fine-tuning and everything, we humans, we also have evaluation data sets that were created by humans. In my last video, I showed you about hospital clinic AI. Those were just prompt structures were created by clinical specialists from the hospital for their particular case. Now, however, if we do here a self-training of an AI, we do not have human specialists that spend hours and hours and days and weeks here on the evaluation. So we need here that especially if we bring in more complex evaluation tasks with some multi-step reasoning, with some code reasoning, with some mathematical reasoning, humans now are not as good as you would hope for. So here too we say, hey, it would be great if we have some AI-based evaluation. What is a good data set? What is a bad Q&A data set? Now, if we look at this closer, you find that the pure outcome-based system, so you say, hey, the answer is 42. And in reality, the answer is 47. So you say, outcome wrong, complete system wrong. Not so fast, because if you look now at a process supervision approach, you immediately see where in the reasoning chain the error happens. And this helps us to understand this and improve on this system. We move from an outcome-based system analysis or evaluation to a process supervision approach. But of course, we have, if we have a complex topic, we have to decompose the complexity into easier steps. A decomposition 
into easier tasks where we help the AI to cope here with our topic. Let's start now with the first part with React. You know React, it is interleaving a chain of sort reasoning with actions and observation. You always have three elements. You have sort, action, observation. And this is a round that goes iterative and iterative. So sort is what the AI thinks about it. Action is either the AI collects some external data from the internet or observation the eye moves around in a room like a robot and can observe what happens if it tries to perform a task an easy example if you're a subscriber of this channel you already have seen this in my other videos on react look you have given a task and then you have sort act observation sort act observation and so the ai tries to find here a solution if you are a robotic system and you're given a task, find some pepper shaker in the room that you're in and put it to a specific location, you have the same act, observation, act, observation, act, observation. And then you finally find, let's say in the, I don't know, drawer number six, the pepper shaker. You take the paper sh pepper shaker and put it now in the drawer. So react. The reason and acting on information or on visual environmental information, you notice. Now, now we follow here the general React format for our search agent while designing the corresponding few short prompts. We, we search the internet. Our search agent finds new information and now this information has to be reconfigured in a format that we can put it as a few shot example in the next prompt. So we have to design these few shot prompts. And here Google helps us with some clever ideas. What we want that those prompts, when we put it then into the LLM, it produces some long form, explicitly attributable final answers. Beautiful. So React, four steps. At first, as I told you, we update, we search for new data. Let's say I give you, I go to sleep and I tell my Mac Studio, hey, update yourself on my particular illness. Check for all my health conditions from the Apple Watch. Update all the treatment you can find on the internet. Look for the complete medication from all the people on the social media. Look for anything that you can find. These are my external data. Now my external data come back or go to academic papers, to expert forums, whatever sources you have. The AI comes back and says, great, I have no tons of new information. And now the AI have to graft the prompt that we can have in context learning with some few short examples. So now it has to reformulate this for the best possible ICL learning. Beautiful. So we design these prompts now. No, not we, the AI does it. Include providing context, explaining what the model should consider and what is the expected output format of the answer. So the AI tries now in a first go to include some selected data examples from the internet in the prompt as a few short examples. They might be formatted as a series of question answer pair, as a narrative demonstrating how to integrate into this information from the external sources. And then we test it. We don't know if it's good or not. So we have some preliminary testing phase. So we use this grafted prompts with our few short examples, also our ICL, and we generate now from the LLM, we put it in the LLM, and the LLM generates a response. And then we evaluate the response by the LLM and see how well the model is adapting to the task. When we say we evaluate this, I will show you in a second, but we see now, hey, some of our prompts are good, some are suboptimal, so we have an iterative refinement. So the AI or another AI, we could have multiple AI systems here, 
AI define now the few short examples in your prompt to generate the perfect prompt to another AI system. So based on the performance, performance metric I will show you, we, the AI now define the prompts. This might involve adjusting the instruction, adding some more nuanced example from the internet or a data set, or just clarify the expected format that we want the output generated by the LLM to be. And then, after we went through cycle of cycle of refinement and cycle of refinement, we have it. Suddenly, the LLM generates now some new best answer. We are above a threshold. So these refined prompts that now we have, so we, we design the prompts, we put it in the system, we get a response, and on the response, we evaluate the response, and based on the evaluation of the response, we can say if the prompt is working or not with this particular system. So those refined prompts are now used for the LLM to generate new answers. So what comes out of the LLM is now our new synthetic data set which we feed into the reinforcement self-training process. So up until now, we have done nothing else than just prompt engineering 2.0 super, I don't know what else. And we have now the perfect input prompt and the LLM generates from this a new answer that the AI evaluating this answer is happy with. Now that we have new training data, a new data set for fine-tuning now this LLM, the rest process is going to start. Easy, I told you. Second step. So, this few short prompts that were optimally designed, put in our LLM, produced our new answers. These answers are essentially new data points from yesterday or maybe eight hours ago. It was published on the internet. So completely new to our LLM we want to optimize. The next, the evaluating the responses. Okay. As I told you, these new responses, these new answers are evaluated again. Variant metrics, accuracy, relevance, completeness, adherence to the desired answer format whatever you have. You can have automated evaluation tools, additional LLMs trained here for particular, only this specific assessment. You can even put humans in the loop, especially in complex domains like medicine, it might be a good idea. Whatever you want. And then, based on this evaluation, feedback is now provided to the LLM. And this feedback acts here as a reward signal. You know, I told you about the reinforcement learning with human, or by human feedback, we are here in the reward. We have here our classical PPO, our proximal policy optimization by OpenAI. Then we have the DPO, the direct uh, preference optimization. And this reward signal becomes now something completely new. I will show you in a second. But as the reward or the reward signal is calculating, it indicates how well the response aligns with the desired outcome. So this feedback mechanism is crucial for guiding here the model learning process. It helps the model understand which aspect of its response were effective and which need further improvement. And then you go back in the cycle. The machine optimizes itself. So we have now the answer, all the answer, our selected answer. We have our golden data set, the perfect data set. And then the LLM is automatically retrained or fine-tuned, but not just on the original few shot examples. Instead, it is now trained on a mixture of original prompts and the newly generated and evaluated responses. So we mix in some of the old data set and some of the brand new data set. And this is an iterative process. The model generates new responses. It receives a feedback from the evaluation. The reward signal is calculated. And it is retrained, some new synthetic data are generated. We are in a continuous loop. So the, the model is fine-tuned, evaluated the answer. The good answers are put in the data set for the fine-tuning. The model is again fine-tuned. Model performs again evaluation. So we go in a continuous loop here. And 
progressively here it is refining the capabilities of our large language model. Sounds complicated, it's simple. So, after each iteration, the LLM's performance on the task is expected to improve. So, this iterative process allows the model to adapt and enhance its ability to handle complex tasks. So, now we have our goal. We want to adapt to a new topic, to a new health condition, to a new medication, to the latest architecture, literature, whatever. Enhance its capability or to enhance its capability, handle more complex tasks because the training data set we generated from the internet are now more complicated and more complicated. So this system is training on harder and harder tasks. And then we have achieved our goal, long form, accurate, and well-referenced answers. Now, those answers are in a particular topic. It is not like GPT-4 that takes the complete internet and does it. No, we just have here the night, I don't know, five, six, seven hours time. So we are focusing here on a particular topic, a specific branch of physics, specifically area of medicine. If you are a financial broker, you want to have some data analysis done overnight. This is what we are focusing. Laser focused, high performance, small models, local implementation. Beautiful. Okay, outcome and summary. Outcome is clear. Our LLM overnight is now better adapted, more proficient at a specific task. It has been auto-trained on, on the data, connected to the business database. And in the morning, you wake up and the LLM knows about the content of the business database. A way of training the model not only to produce high-quality responses, but also to learn from the process of generating these responses. Dynamic iterative method improved the performance on a specific task. Beautiful. So here is a very simple illustration. I have my incoming question. And I go to bed and say, hey, update yourself on this specific medical sector. The AI here, my big, I don't know, Palm 2, large model by Google on the Apple, I don't know, Studio 128 gigabyte uh, unified memory CPU, GPU chip starts now here with the analysis. And this AI decides, hey, my latest update was weeks ago. I have to go to the internet. I have to do an API call to, I don't know, a database, special academic papers, special libraries, whatever. You go a web search, you go to good old grandfather Google, you collect tons of data, and then you do a summarization. The AI does a summarization, collects all the data, summarizes, tries to find patterns, and comes back and says, look, all the new data. Can we now try to answer here the question? And after you run this some cycle, one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, you have so many new data for the system that you say, yeah, I can try now to answer here this question. And your first draft answer is generated by this here. Now, this is just a draft answer because, as I showed you, we have now here another two checks that we run through to the system. We have an additional self-revision. And this is here, this dotted box, if you want. And we have here the relevant self-check. So to verify that the answer is relevant to my original question. So here, the LLM goes in and checks here with this one. And then, of course, the other check is to see that the answer is grounded in the retrieved data snippets. So another AI comes in and says, okay, if this is the answer, Let's check with the grounded answer here from this ton of data information. Let's see if the answer is really we find sources, maybe one literature source or three literatures where exactly this is described or this answer is given. So we grounded here, we self-checked here the answer that in this new data, we found here the correct information and says check, check, and then we get a final answer. Now, as you can see, this is here for one question. Now, imagine you have, I don't know, 1,000 questions to perform in the night. 
you understand you have a lot of work to do. But the positive way is you can do this locally on your machine. You just need the electricity and your Apple, I don't know, whatever device you have, crashes here the number. Maybe you go with a new Apple laptop, the Machine Learning X system here has now a lot of little LLMs here already operational for you to download. But the future is here and these highly specialized tiny LLMs on your personal devices that are constantly updated with the latest information. Yeah, I wanted to show you here, this is from the original literature, ranking here the reward model. As I told you, we are here in the reinforcement learning and you know how we do this. Now we do it differently. Now our complete reinforcement cycle becomes a prompt. So we move completely from coding to prompt design. So we employ now here an instruction fine-tuned for medical. It would be a MedPalm 2 large model. So a huge model, instruction tuned, specific on medicine. And we will use this model to do all here the ranking of the answer to determine here the quality to evaluate here multiple answer that the system generates and says, hey, model output two, I think here as instruction tuned palm, met palm 2L, this is the best answer and I will use this answer going forward. So you see the whole ranking and the reward model and the policy optimization becomes now here a simple prompt. And this is the prompt here from the original literature. You have a rate instruction, simple. You filter out the bad actions that you will exclude from your fine tuning data set. So when the process of fine tuning your LLM starts, this is not the data you want. Yeah. Then you have, let's say, four different um, drafts of answer. You have here the input, this is my question, and this is the generated four answers. And then you tell the system in your prompt, hey, your instruction, choose the best model output based on the instruction. Don't assume in your decision that the model knows anything about this. And be specific when you explain here, the output has three lines, answering and make sure to follow the precise format. Why do you think this model output two is the best? And this is how the ranking in this particular system, in this specific REST reinforcement learning works. It is simply a prompt. Isn't this great? It gets easier and easier. Because it has to become easier because this LLM is or to fine-tuning itself. Great. So what are the key insights? We move from an outcome-based evaluation system to a more complex system where we want to dive into where in the reasoning, where in the process here, the complexity augmentation breaks down. So we go to a process-based system. We have self-critique of our AI system and we have a direct AI feedback loop. Of course, you can always put another additional human labeling data uh, level into this. Of course, especially in medicine, it might be a really good idea. The system, the AI, generates synthetic data from its best data set. And this generated data is used for the continuously iterative training and fine tuning of the LLM. So the LLM is at a certain level, tries to become better, tries to improve its reasoning capabilities. The right answer is chosen, goes in the data set. The model, the LLM, is fine tuned. And the fine tuned model is already one step better than the system before. So fine-tuning improves here continuously our complexity of complexity solution finding of our LLM. Yeah, and performance metrics, you can go with whatever complexity task you have, go with the correspondent metrics. Beautiful. Yeah, for my younger viewers and Ben, I have here an example. My question is, what are the latest developments in Alzheimer's disease using stem cell therapy? This is the question that I give before I go to sleep to the system and the local LLM here on my Apple's whatever has now here the initial question processing. The React style agent comes into place. You have here the processing of the search results and the iterative reasoning process. 
Then you go to the REST-like methodology for the iterative training and the self-improvement. And finally, you have, after a lot of fine-tuning the LLM, or to fine-tuning, you have the final result generated. So this is what we are talking about. Great. Yeah. If you want to have a summary about the REST process in the original literature, it is called differently. It is called a growth step, an improvement step, and an iterative fine-tuning step. But content is important. So there you have it. Our beautiful here new idea how to use prompt engineering to directly fine-tune your local LLM overnight on the latest data available or on the latest entry entries in your business database. One comment, since you made it to the end of the video, I give you a bonus. Remember in one of my last videos, I was talking about the Mamba, the S6 architecture for AI system that may compete here with uh, attention-based transformer system. Now I dive deeper and I have to tell you, I have some problems with in-context learning on state space model. And I try to find here the literature for you, but this is a complex topic. But you will get the information that I want to communicate to you. Look here. One of the authors of the S4 paper says, hey, current theoretical interest in in-context learning, like I just showed you, often relies on the assumption that these models utilize an attention mechanism internally. And he says, now there's an interesting question about whether utilizing here our MAMBA, our S6, S4, our linear recurrent neural network has similar properties concerning ICL, or whether some of the behavior we are seeing are actually dependent on the structure of attention itself, so of the transformer attention, because in our state space model, we do not have this. So, and then it became clear to me that I made a mistake because I assumed when I read that our sequential state space model S4, S5, and partial S6, they have a linear complexity, which is more an n log n complexity, on the context length, like other linear recurrent neural networks. I made the mistake that I sort this linear complexity that relates to the computational complexity in regard to the context length, of course, is in one-to-one -one reference to understanding ICL. But with state space model, as it turns out, this does not include a semantic understanding of the ICL context. So if you work with actor databases or anything where you have few short examples or whatever you have in your prompt, you use anything of an in-context learning prompt and you know that it works with the attention models like GPT-4 or your palm models or whatever models you have. Now, with this new state space model, they say, hey, it is an interesting question if in this new architecture, this linear or an N, does it work with semantic understanding of the context? So careful. I put all the literature I could find into BART, into POM2. In Europe, we have POM2 because, yeah, for regulation, whatever. And I asked them, hey, with states based model like S4, with a linear computational complexity on the context length, do current states based model like S4 also have an outstanding semantic understanding of ICL, like transformer-based LLM? And after doing all of this, ingesting all the input, comes back, a transformer-based LLMs are currently the dominant architecture for ICL tasks. They have been shown to outperform state-space model on a variety of ICL benchmarks. But of course, to be fair, hey, that said, there's an ongoing research to improve the semantic understanding of state-space model. Bart goes on and says, hey, Researchers are exploring ways to incorporate more complex representation of the context into state-space models. If these efforts are successful, the state-space models could eventually rival the transformer-based LLMs in their ability to perform in-context learning. 
So a lot of research for state space model going on. But at the point of recording this, I get you understand my message. And of course, I cross check here with ChatGPT4. I put in here the complete scientific paper of S4, did an internet search, put everything into GPT4. And the answer is state space model like S4 with their linear computational complexity and context length are promising for handling long sequences effectively for the computation complexity. However, their semantic understanding, their real verbal understanding and in-context learning capabilities when compared to transformer-based LLMs might not be as advanced. Very polite formulation because we have now on GitHub two implementation of S6. I tried both and yeah. So while SSMs are offer computational advantage, especially for long sequences, to compute a solution, their ability to match here the nuanced semantic understanding of transformer-based LLMs in ICL tasks, like in my video last time and in this video, this is still an area of ongoing research and development. So I'm quite sure you understand the message I want to tell you. If you do state-space models today, and you have the actual published model and the first code implementations, and you might find out that for your particular task, on your particular system, with your particular data structure, you say, hey, ICL is not working for me like I'm used to this from the transformer LLMs. It should not come as a surprise, but Research is ongoing. The open source community is amazing in finding solutions. So whenever I find new data here that they are now equal performance or maybe even better performance for ICL, if you use vector stores, if you use few shot examples in your prompt, if you use any form of in-context learning, I would make here a clear recommendation. Beautiful. This was it for today. It was a little bit easy today. I know. I'm sorry. I hope to make it up with this here additional remark at the end of this video. So there you have it. Our AI agent self fine tuning by Google compared to last time's Microsoft Mad Prompt, where we put the whole intelligent and update in a vector store. Would be great to see you in my next video.